In this episode, we arrive at our first port, Dubrovnik. I test out Holland America Line shore excursions, and whether or not you're a Game of Thrones fan, I'll guide you around this UNESCO World Heritage Site and show you another location to consider if you're visiting Dubrovnik. I'll also take full advantage of Holland America Line's extended time in port. My day began with a stunning sunrise sailing into Dubrovnik. If you want to catch up on what I've been doing since I left Athens, then the first two episodes in this series are live on my channel now. After a short scenic sailing, which is worth getting up for, we docked just outside Dubrovnik's historic centre. The cruise port in Dubrovnik is around three kilometres outside Dubrovnik's old town. I started my day with room service, enjoying a breakfast that featured a range of options from continental to all American favourites. There are lots of different options to choose from and you can even upgrade to steak and eggs, a breakfast smoothie or even lobster benedict. Holland America's room service breakfast is exceptional. It's delivered hot and fresh and is really tasty. Today I was booked on a shore excursion, so I headed to the World Stage Theatre to join our group. Holland America Line conveniently adds your excursion tickets to their Navigator app, so eliminating the need for paper tickets. I really loved how organised Holland America are in handling excursions. and They display the departure times and statuses on a screen, much like an airport departure board. Ready and waiting outside were our coaches, complete with pocket earphones for our guided tour. Now, while I joined the Holland America Line shore excursion in Dubrovnik today, you can also independently explore Dubrovnik and there are plenty of taxis waiting at the port side. There's also a public bus which takes you from the cruise port to the old town. Or you can walk if you want, although it is a three kilometre hilly walk each way. Our shore excursion started with a walking tour around Dubrovnik's main areas. And while we didn't visit everything in the old town on this shore excursion, here's my list of top things to see and do if you are exploring Dubrovnik yourself. I'll cover a few of these in the rest of the video, but if you're exploring independently, you might want to pause here and make a note of these. I also have a blog post on my website, which you might be interested in, to help you plan your day in Dubrovnik. If you are visiting independently, then my tip is to make the tourist centre your first stop. And you can find this on your right after you enter Pile Gate. There are lots of options here, such as walking tours and boat tours. But my tip is to always make sure that you get back to your ship in plenty of time. My tip is to visit the old town early because it can get hot and crowded. Game of Thrones fans will find specific tours, but for me it was a nostalgic return having last visited before the series was even filmed. Next, we made our way to the Old Harbour. Sometimes smaller ships anchor just off Lockram Island, and this is where you pick up your tender boats to return to the ship. The Old Harbour is a great spot for boat tours to Lockram Island, the Blue Caves or Savtat, which we'll be visiting later in this video. After exploring the harbour, we returned to the Stradon to see some more key sites. Though we didn't have time to take the cable car up to Mount Serge for panoramic views, it is a must-do for spectacular scenery. I also recommend grabbing something to eat and drink at one of the old town's many cafes and exploring the back streets for a true sense of Dubrovnik's architecture and history, including sites impacted by the siege of Dubrovnik during the Croatian War of Independence. After you've 
you've explored some of the side streets in Dubrovnik's old town, I definitely recommend taking a walk down the Stradon, the main esplanade in Dubrovnik's old town. At the end of the Stradon, you'll find one of Dubrovnik's most famous landmarks, which is a six-sided water fountain and one of the ending points of the aqueduct system, which brings fresh water to Dubrovnik. The spring water in the fountain is perfectly drinkable and it's great for topping up your water bottle during a hot day in the old town. One of the other things that you might want to do in Dubrovnik, although we didn't have time to do it on this visit, is to walk the city walls. And my advice is to take your time and enjoy the walk rather than rushing around it. And you might find some interesting sights along the way. After our walking tour, we met back at the main square just outside Pilegate and had some time to do some people watching while waiting for the coach. And I had an opportunity to take in the views of the West Harbour and the surrounding fortifications. I also forgot to mention that Dubrovnik is also home to many content and well-fed cats cared for by the locals. Our next stop was a traditional Croatian farmhouse for lunch. We enjoyed the Convale hospitality and food, which included local wine, grilled chicken and strudel with live music. After a short trip, we arrived at Savtat, a charming resort town and an ideal trip for those of you who have already explored Dubrovnik a few times. It's also a great option for escaping Dubrovnik's crowds and the heat. Savtat is easily accessible either by bus or by boat, and I'll put more information in my blog post. I really wish I'd packed my swimsuit as the crystal clear waters were so very inviting and they were easily accessible places to swim around the quayside. And extra points if you spotted the fish at the end of that last shot. With only 30 minutes in Savtat, there was just enough time for a quick paddle in the Adriatic Sea and a quick stroll along the quayside just to admire the very lovely yachts and I also spotted the ferry service taking day visitors back to Dubrovnik. After returning to the ship around 4pm, we were greeted with cold towels and iced water and lemonade. And I absolutely love Holland America line for this. Then it was time for a quick freshen up in the cabin before taking the ship's shuttle bus back into town and then a short walk up to the Prosecco bar to enjoy a drink and snacks with friends while we enjoyed watching the sunset over the Adriatic Sea. After the sunset, we headed back on the ship's shuttle around 9.30pm and then it was an hour before we were due to set sail for our next port. This gave me just enough time to get some evening shots from outside the ship. After a full day on a great shore excursion, I decided this evening just to chill out in my cabin to watch the sail away and decided to test out Holland America Line's room service. Once again, the room service exceeded expectations. The portion sizes were great and the selection, although not extensive, was still varied. The food was fresh and flavourful and certainly hit the spot after a fulfilling day ashore. Then it was time to watch the evening sail away from my cabin before hitting the sack. Join me in the next episode where we'll visit Kotor. We'll take a scenic sail in to this UNESCO World Heritage Site. I get a ride to shore in one of Osterdam's tender boats and explore one of the destinations which has been on my bucket list for a while. I'll also take you on a tour of the entertainment venues on board Osterdam and I'll discover what I think is the best poolside burger at sea. If you found this video useful, then please like and subscribe and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links in the description below. Or watch some more of my Osterdam content now.